Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sorry again about another e-learning day. Um, but as uh, Kim went to work today, it took her about two hours to get into work. Wow, sorry, I got a haircut. My hair is a little bit messed up. Um, but uh, but yeah, the roads are kind of uh, not great. Um, it stinks because I want to be there with you guys, but at the same time, I want to make sure that everybody's able to get in safe and everything. So uh, yeah, we're uh, we're doing a little bit of e-learning today. I figured uh, you know yesterday uh, didn't work out quite as well on the meeting, so I just figured I'd videotape myself uh, going on this with you guys. That way, we can have an actual lesson together. Um, even though it's going to be a videotaped one, and even though it's not going to be uh, perfect or anything. So, uh, anyway, I just want to kind of, uh, briefly touch base with you guys and, uh, just, you know, talk to you a little bit before we get into this. Uh, this video shouldn't take more than 30 minutes to watch. So I, I appreciate you guys watching it. Um, please make sure that, uh, you do. I will have a, uh, I will actually put a code word at the end uh, or towards the middle of the video, I guess, um, to show that you actually did watch it. So to prove that you actually watched it, um, it'll be on there here just shortly. Uh, currently, it's about 745 in the morning. So let's just go ahead and get started, guys, uh, while we, uh, you know, while we can. Um, anyway, uh, this week has been a little bit different, but you guys have been reading these stories this week called uh, Better Than Words, Say It With a Selfie, and OMG, Not Another Selfie. Okay, there's a pattern here. We've we've now read this has been our, been our third story about selfies. We read the selfies and self portraits one uh, not too long ago, and then uh, now we have two different ones. But what's different about these? If you look right here, we actually have two things that are arguments. So both these are argumentative essays. Now, if you think back to uh, back in November when you guys actually wrote your uh, your argumentative essays about the zoos, um, could have been October as well. This is, you know, a, a very similar thing. But today we're going to talk about the effects of an argumentative essay and all that. Um, before I move on, I want to just go ahead and give you guys a rundown of things that you will need to do uh, today. Up at the top here, there's actually going to be this video. So you will have to show me that you actually did watch this video. Um, but you do have some second read questions, a writing prompt, uh, two, two, and two. So, you know me, I like to set a purpose for anything that we do. So before we even, uh, you know, get started today, let's talk about the things that we're actually going to do. So first things first, we have a, uh, you know, some second read questions. There's three questions here, guys. Um, I want to give you guys as much time as possible to, to relax. Some of you have been taking this a little bit too seriously and haven't been actually completing work. I'm sending messages to families again today just to let them know that, hey, they're, you know, the child's missing some things. In fact, after I'm finished with this video, after it's uploaded and everything, I'm going to uh, to just go ahead and start sending those messages. Um, anyway, uh, after reading Pat, pages 303 through 307, answer the following questions. You're going to say, Mr. Games, I have my book. Guys, literally, boom, it's right here. It is this, this uh, PDF file right here. It literally pulls up the actual story. Um, no qualms about it. I understand the vocabulary was a little bit different. If you have not already done so, the vocabulary, just use dictionary.com. Um, but anyway, these questions are pretty, pretty, you know, standard, but I want you guys to be able to use text evidence. So after reading the selection, what is the author's position about selfies? So today we're going to talk about author's positions. Really, that's how they feel about selfies. Okay. So how does the author feel about selfies from this, uh, this particular uh, uh, argumentative essay that they've talked about there? Okay. Uh, Use four to six sentences, by the way, for this one. It's it's not going to be a, you know, just a one and done, uh, you know, kind of thing. In fact, with all these guys, you cannot just type in random words or random anything. You got to get them finished. Number two, who do you think the author is writing this essay to? So we're going to talk about intended audience today. Okay. We're going to be talking about uh, the author's position and then some, in, some of the intended audience. So Follow along, you'll probably get a good answer out of it, but uh, but that's the two things that we're going to talk about. And then number three, there's only three questions. You're going to reread paragraph 14 in the text. Who might this evidence that the author give gives appeal to? So who might this evidence that the author gives appeal to? So you're going to be looking for how it's appealing and who it's appealing to. Who's the intended audience of the selection is basically what it's going to ask. It's kind of similar to question two, but it's talking about just the, the paragraph 14. Okay, so that's the first assignment that we have today. 
Second assignment, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. this writing prompt. And this writing prompt is a fun one. It's a five-sentence writing prompt. You at least have to write five sentences. Uh, describe snow to someone who has never seen it before. There are people around this world that have never seen snow, believe it or not. Okay, Even if they have, there may be people in this world that are that cannot see very well or can't see at all. So describe snow to them. Use all five senses to describe what snow feels like, sounds like, smells like, tastes like, and looks like, okay? I recognize that some of you are going to say snow does not have a smell. It, it kind of does. If you don't know, go outside and smell it, okay? Just describe that for me. Um, you can't just say it feels cold, by the way. You got to tell them how. Okay, snow doesn't just feel cold. It has different things actually to it that it does feel like. So anyway, that's uh, that's going to be that particular assignment. Five sentences at least, at least five sentences. And last but not least, two, two, and two. This is a uh, a homophone. Um, things that are or that sound the same but have different meanings. So I want just to kind of go over this. I believe that there's ten questions on this. Uh, it's a simple fill in the blank, guys. Uh, multiple choice. Just get that in there. I want to see what you guys are there. Uh, two is a preposition before a noun or an infinitive before a verb. Tell it describes where you're or where you're doing something. Um, two t o o this is is a synonym for also, and then two is a number. Okay, the examples are right there for you guys. You should be able to find those. What are you doing? Sorry. You guys should be able to find those and uh, answer those pretty quickly. That's not, it's not a hard uh, task there. So anyway, now that we kind of have that going on for us, let's talk about what we're actually going to be doing in this whole group lesson today, guys. I want to keep this uh, kind of short, but at the same time, I want to get through it. That way we are good to go. We are uh, going to be comparing these two uh, essays by the time we get back. So uh, realistically today, we're going to be focusing on just one. We're going to be focusing on better than words. Say it with a selfie. We're going to be focusing on uh, OMG, not another selfie tomorrow, whether we're doing e-learning or in person. And uh, next week, we're going to start comparing these. This this one's going to be something that we continue on throughout the week. Okay. So again, our essential question for this, guys, is what are the ways you can make yourself heard? Now, these authors are actually, they both have differing opinions on selfies. And so that's what you're going to have to kind of compare them to based on Really, the titles, you could probably figure out what Gloria Chang feels about selfies and what Shermike Bass feels about selfies over here. Um, those are going to be things that you guys do need to, uh, you know, you, that, that we will talk about and things that we will be able to compare there. So let's just look at this really quickly. We're going to be comparing arguments. Um, as you read the arguments, focus on the reasons and evidence used to support the claims. Think about which points seem convincing to you and which do not. Then consider why. When we come back, we're also going to be talking about this. So if you remember, we had uh, our claim, okay, which is our stance. When we wrote our, our essays about the zoos, we had our stance. We had what we were writing about, what our position was on it. Then we had our pieces of evidence, okay, the things that supported our claims. Finally, we had a counterclaim. You may not see a counterclaim in these essays. You might. And then we had the conclusion. Those are all parts of an argumentative essay. Um, within this, we're going to be able to find what this person's claim is, and then we're going to be able to find what details they actually do to support that. In fact, we know that's our first question. What is this person's claim about selfies? Okay. So let's think about this really quickly. I want you guys just to think, uh, and this might be a writing prompt, uh, that I throw in a little bit later, but why do people take selfies? Um, I'm, I'm not the one, or I'm not going to sit there and say that I haven't taken selfies. In fact, when I got my hair cut yesterday, I was tired of long hair. So I pulled up an old picture of myself, literally from six years ago. Holy cow. And I was like, make my hair look like this. And if you look, I took a selfie. Okay. Now, I don't think they did a great job. I think that they need to, I need to go back and get it cut again. Um, but, and I'm also older now, so I can't really, everything kind of looks different, but I have kind of like a puff ball on my head. It feels like now it just needs to flatten out. Ugh. But yeah, so why did I take that selfie back in the day? Now, I'll tell you this. That was a good look for me back in the day. Holy cow, but ugh. a lot of <laughs> a lot of cringiness that was there. But I was, you know, me personally, I looked at that selfie yesterday and I said, all right, I want my hair to look like this. The person that cut my hair didn't really make it look like that. It also could be the fact that it's 
not really styled that well. So now I'm playing around with my hair, guys. Forgive me. It's all good. Um, so do people take selfies for good reasons, for bad reasons? Uh, write down two good reasons for taking a selfie. We're not going to do that part. We're going to do that part when we come back. But let's think about this. What good do selfies actually do? Okay. Me personally, I've seen people that take a picture of themselves every day for a year. Okay. There's actually a really cool video where people actually do that. If you do, if you have time today, look it up on YouTube where it's a picture a day um, for a year. It's, re it's a really cool thing. And so people can do that to show growth. People can do that to show change. People can do that to show a lot of different things. Um, if you're ever interested in seeing how you change throughout the years, take a picture of yourself every single day and just look at how it changes. That would actually be a cool assignment. Maybe we'll do that when we come back where we actually literally take a picture of ourselves every day for a uh, for a month and just see what changes or maybe even for the rest of the year. I think that that would be a good thing. But there's also bad reasons that people could take selfies. You know, some people could take selfies to show. I'm, I'm, I won't even get into that, but there are some things that people can do um, that aren't necessarily the greatest things that they're taking selfies um, to do. So uh, we'll get into this. But <clears throat> a few things that we're going to talk about today is uh, rhetor rhetorical devices. Uh, rhetorical devices are techniques that convince readers to agree with the claim. If you think about uh, when you watch a Super Bowl commercial, we look at all those things that, uh, you know, the the people are doing. You know, we had Drake from State Farm uh, in the last one. So they brought in somebody that's a famous person to try to sell you car insurance. Uh, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis were eating Cheetos with an old Shaggy song uh, that was remixed for that. They're trying to get you to buy things. So. Rhetorical devices are ways that authors use to convince you to agree with them, okay? Some of those include parallelism, which is repeating similar grammatical structures, okay? Repetition, it's it's quite literally a repetition of things that are there. Hyperbole is great exaggeration. It's for truth or for effect, okay? It's exaggerating the truth, I should say. Um, you think about hyperbole as being something as simple as, as I'm so hungry I can eat a horse, Um but they will over-exaggerate things to kind of make you agree with their particular statement. Uh, again, repetition is very similar to parallelism. Um, parallelism repeats the grammatical structures. Repetition repeats a word. Okay. Um, sometimes you can suspect that things are wrong with an argument, and that's called a logical fallacy because it disagrees with the logic. It, it, it's an error in that person's logic. You'll be able to see based on uh, what those people are doing. Are they actually giving you truth here or are they trying to just get you to agree with them without throwing in facts, okay? So over here at this, uh, the general elements about uh, arguments, uh, you know, we state a position, we state a claim uh, about a topic. We include evidence, facts, statistics, quotations, examples, or personal experiences to support the position. And we use logic or emotion uh, as well as rhetorical, rhetorical devices to persuade readers. Your goal with an argumentative essay is to get somebody to agree with you uh, based on that. You're not trying to persuade them in any way necessarily, but you're trying to get them to agree with you. Okay. So we'll be able to uh, identify, you know, some of those conclusions that the author is going through here. We're going to be able to identify the claim today and some pieces of evidence that are here. Uh, over here, we have uh, some other fallacy things. We'll talk about that more when we get it back or when we get back to school. So again, we're going to be looking at the rhetorical devices to really identify the author's claim, okay, the author's position about something. That's going to be the first question that we have. Question two is identifying an audience or argument's audience. So uh, how a writer presents and supports an argument depends on the intended audience for re or of readers. Uh, some audiences may be persuaded by statistics and factual evidence. Other audience may respond more strongly to evidence that focuses on per per blah, 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 personal experience, okay? We're going to be looking for who the audience or who the author is actually writing it to and how they're writing it. What are they actually trying to say here to kind of get there? Um, so let's just focus on this. Let's go ahead and go on. And I'm going to read better than words, say it with a selfie to you. And I'm going to pause occasionally to talk about some of the things that are here. Okay. Great little picture here of a guy with a handlebar mustache. I will never do that. Uh, will not grow mine out to look like that or turn it up to and style it with wax. Okay. A little bit of background about, uh, you know, selfies here today. People of all ages, young and old use smartphones quite literally couldn't go anywhere without mine. Now, um, children grow up sending photos and making video calls to 
grandparents. Students use phones to carry out research for school and to connect with friends. And though the word selfie only entered our vocabulary in the early 2000s, people know all about them. With the rise in popularity, people have developed strong opinions about selfies. As you read this writer's arguments, continue or consider your own opinion. The first selfie, by the way, the first camera selfie was taken in like the 1800s, either 1839 or 1859. I can't exactly remember. Good thing for you to research, by the way, if you want to. Uh, when was the first selfie with a camera actually taken? So selfies aren't new. It's just the way that we've actually, you know, spoken about them. Uh, we're going to be comparing the two, uh, the two po or the two poems, the two are, are argumentative essays that we're going to read. Okay, we need to identify the author's claim and the evidence that they use to support their claims. Okay, we're going to pay attention now the writer's persuasive technique or to the writer's persuasive techniques and how they affect our thoughts about selfies. Who do you think her audience is going to be? Both of these articles. Who do you think their audience is? So let's think about this. I, I want you to think about your current position on selfies. Do you think selfies are cool? Do you think selfies are lame? Do you think selfies are good? Do you think selfies are bad? I want you to go ahead and take your, give yourself about a few seconds. Now, by the way, what you're going to tell me right here, keyword to show that you actually watched this video, I want you to type in at the end of this video on that what your, this is only going to be one. There's two parts here what your position is on selfies. So go ahead and write that down or type that in. What is your current position on selfies? How do you feel about selfies? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they lame? Are they cool? What is your current position on selfies here? Um, so you're going to be actually, I want you to go ahead and write that down. That's going to be one thing that you have to type in. There's going to be two that you have to do. It's going to tell me whether or not you watched the whole thing or just watched a, a part of it. Um, but there are two things that I want you to write down about selfies at the end of this video. I want you to write what you believe about selfies. Okay. I'm going to check on this. I believe that right now we're about 15 minutes into the video. So 15 minutes in, if you need to go back, you're more than welcome to. But 15 minutes into the video, you guys are going to tell me what your position is on selfies. Write that down. Okay. That's going to be what you type in at the end. All right. So let's go ahead and read this, guys. And let's talk about a few things that we're going to talk about in there. Okay. In our digital age, the selfie is the best way to express oneself, empower oneself, and even surround oneself with friends. Everyone everywhere owns and uses a smartphone. And with at least a million different social media platforms available, you'd have to live in a cave not to take part in, appreci or in, an, uh, in and appreciate this form of communication. Sure, there are critics who say that selfies are taken only by narcissists. By the way, narcissists right there are people who are preoccupied with their looks craving attention, but those critics really do live in caves and they certainly have no friends. I wonder what this person's position is on selfies. Look at this right here. We have some rep repetition that actually popped up. We have express oneself, we have empower oneself, and we have surround oneself. Do you see that instance of repetition there? Okay. The way that it's read is the selfie is the best way to express oneself, empower oneself, and even surround oneself with friends. OK. The author is usually like or literally like repeating this because they want us to sound forceful or they want it to sound forceful. They want it to convince us here. Now, again, if you look down here, the author is basically saying critics are saying that people that are taking selfies are narcissists who crave attention. OK, but those critics do live in caves, really do live in caves. This person really has a good view over selfies, I think, and you can probably see how they feel about selfies just based on that first paragraph. But think about that. Okay. So selfies are about art and about life. This right here is our first heading, by the way. Um, we did see our first subscript, which was kind of hard to see, but it's right back there. Um, that tells us what that, uh, that definition is. So in a society saturated, another vocabulary word, stuffed to the brim with social media, selfies are an artistic form of self-expression. Humans, since the beginning of time, have used self-portraits to express themselves. From ancient Egypt to the early Greeks, the famous painters such as Rembrandt and Van Gogh, ooh, we, we know about them, people have expressed themselves artistically through self-portraits. The only difference between the artists of old and modern selfie takers is that technology now allows anyone and everyone to be an artist, and a self-portrait is now called a selfie. It's easy to create a self-portrait with a smartphone and its filters. You don't need to know how to draw or paint when you have a cell phone. Okay. 
selfies are about self-discovery. Look at how this art or this artist, this author is separating her argumentative essay. Instead of just going through and you know writing it down and just you know having claim, 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 they're separating it into headings. This is eventually where you guys need to go with your own argumentative essays. Now that could be later on this year. That could be even going into next year. Okay. Paragraph four, selfies or selfies are about self-discovery. Selfies allow people, ugh, cracking voice. Selfies allow people to show different parts of themselves. Maybe it's their artistic side. Maybe it's their silly side, or maybe it's to show an interest or passion, such as a love of certain foods. Whatever that side may be, by showing the selfie taker's interests, selfies become more real than any boring photographer's work. Photographers don't care if they show you who you truly are in these boring photos. They're interested in only in making sure you are in focus. They don't know what you are like. How can they? None of us even know ourselves until we experiment with different views, explore different interests, and discover the things that influence us. In this way, selfies, unlike past self-portraits that were taken on handy mobile devices, allow us an easier and better way to find out who we are. Just like trying on different clothes to find what works best for our personalities, taking selfies is an excellent way to test how we look and feel in certain outfits, poses, and places. Our own reaction to these pictures, along with the reactions of friends and strangers, help us figure out what works for us as unique individuals. So you should be able to now see what the author's claim is. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but how does the author feel about selfies? So when you go back to answer question one here, guys, basically, what's the author's position about selfies? How do they feel and how do you know? So from reading this, how do they feel about selfies? How do you know? What details are they using to support what they feel about selfies here? Okay. Selfies are about self-expression. Paragraph six. Taking a selfie is like saying to the world, this is me right now, right here. And a selfie does a better job of communicating this who, when, and where than spoken or written words can. After all, the human brain, as science shows, is hardwired to recognize faces. In other words, we naturally recognize things and people visually. The effect is more immediate. The objects, people, and background in a selfie can show what a selfie taker likes, hates, admires, or aspires to. The taker's attitude will naturally affect his or her facial expressions. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Even museums and art galleries know that selfies can be an artistic means of self-expression. They encourage visitors to take selfies with works of art to share as art. One gallery in London even held an international selfie competition for people to submit the most artistic selfies. But don't just trust the artist and everyone who takes selfies. Trust science. One scientist who studied the motivation for taking selfies found that we take selfies as a form of self-expression, not to be narcissistic. So don't assume that you're a narcissist. Don't assume that it's all about you. Let's think about this really quickly. Who do you think the author is writing this to? Who do you think the author is kind of writing this to here? And I would challenge you to think about this a little bit deeper than just the base level. Oh, the author's writing this to me because I'm reading it. No. Who is the author actually writing this to? What are they? What's their purpose for writing this, number one? But who are they writing this to? Okay. Are they writing this to somebody that's interested in taking selfies? Are they writing this to somebody who thinks taking selfies is a waste of time, is dumb, is lame? Are they writing this to somebody who challenges that taking selfies is a good thing? Who is the author's intended audience here? So if you look at question two, it's going to ask you that. Who is this author writing this essay to? How do you know? Use details from the text to support your answer. It's a little bit challenging. We're going to go over this when we come back to class, but I want to see what you guys can do with it. Okay, so who is the author actually writing this to in this case? Okay. Paragraph nine, selfies are about self-confidence. Selfies empower us because they fulfill our need for validation from friends, family, and the rest of the world. If you don't believe it, try it. Science has shown once again that taking selfies makes you more confident. Look at what they're saying there, especially kids. Science. Have you heard that in this essay before? The author has said that now once here, back up here, scientist, I believe at the beginning of here, okay? The author is trying to give you guys what they feel is the most factual evidence possible. They're saying science has shown that taking selfies makes you more confident, especially kids. Now, is that her own science? Is that a scientist saying this? I don't know. But they're saying science has shown. They're trying to throw in that evidence. So if we think back to where they're really saying that, you know, what the 
the main thing about uh, writing an argumentative essay is they need to show evidence here. So this is going to be a good detail to have when answering a question, guys. Looking through here and saying science is shown. When we look at our own argumentative essays, when we're looking for those rhetorical devices that are there, showing those things that and, and looking for that evidence, showing those things that really invoke emotion or really make somebody think, oh, science has shown that selfies are good, so selfies must be good. Those are the powerful details that the author can throw in here. So think about those things, okay? We all know it. Some people are not allowed to stay, say positive things about themselves because other people will say that they're full of themselves. But a selfie is a photo, so it's access, acceptable for those people to show what they're proud of. Sure, people may get fixated on selfies being about physical things, but that doesn't mean the selfie has to be about how someone looks. Everything in a selfie can tell you about a person. For example, a selfie can tell you about a a selfie can show that someone may be the next celebrity chef because that person always posts selfies of himself or herself cooking and eating at different places in the world. Selfies also empower us because they make us happy. In two studies, researchers discovered that people who took selfies and people who didn't both thought pictures taken by themselves, those are selfies, made them more attractive and likable. If you like photos of yourself, taking them boosts your confidence. In another study, scientists had college students take selfies and share them. This made them more confident and comfortable with their smiling faces. It may not even be possible to take too many selfies. Studies and two studies, researchers, again, they're providing evidence here. They're trying to get you to really, really, really think about the good things about our selfies. So I'm not going to tell you what the author's claim is here, guys, but you should be able to pick that up now. The author's claim about selfies here. Okay. In short, taking and sharing selfies boosts both self-confidence and self-esteem. People who say otherwise are like cavemen. They're probably people who've never taken selfies, so they probably don't have any self-confidence whatsoever. Invoking emotion there. They're saying if you don't take selfies, you have no self-confidence. Hmm. They probably hate people who do have self-confidence. Think about this, guys, the author's credibility here. They're calling out people who don't take selfies, and they're saying, you don't have self-confidence. Do you think that's research-based? Do you think that that's something that a scientist has actually said? Okay. I don't think so. I think that they're just literally just saying something without having evidence and proof, but they're certainly invoking emotion because if somebody reads this and they don't take selfies, they're going to be like, how dare you say I don't have self-confidence? Sorry, I'm getting a little bit animated. I, I wish I was here in the classroom because I'd really love to, to talk in depth about this. I'd really love to, to really break this down. I can't wait to come back because I want to break this down and I want to basically separate fact from opinion here. So that's going to be what we do when we come back potentially next week. Uh, hopefully we come back tomorrow, but tomorrow we're going to jump ahead to OMG, not another selfie. But I want to talk about this. I want to break down fact and fiction. I want us to find those details that that person actually, uh, you know, actually is going through. Okay. 13, selfies are about making connections. The best part of taking selfies is that they're a great way to connect with friends or even make new friends. Since we all have smartphones and social media is everywhere and here to stay, we take or we stay in touch with friends by taking selfies. It's like sending a letter in past times, but selfies are faster and are sent with a phone instead of by a horse, instead of a horse. By taking and sharing a selfie, you can share what you're thinking, feeling, or doing with your friends. Social media is made for others to give feedback, so friends can tell you what they are thinking, feeling, or doing. They can do this by sending their favorite emoticons or posting comments or sending a selfie of themselves back to you. Selfies are all about online social networks, and social networks lead to better relationships. Teens especially say they have more positive experiences than negative ones when using social media. Selfies may have been around for only about a dozen years. But they're today's way of connect or to connect with other people. Now, think about what you guys have. You guys currently have TikTok. You guys currently have Instagram. You guys have all those things where you can share different things about yourself. Do it in a positive light, please, by the way. Um, but question three, which is our last second read question, is to reread paragraph 14 in the text. Who might this evidence that the author gives appeal to? Who is the intended audience of just this section? So think about this. 14. Who is the intended audience here? Just in paragraph 14, not the whole thing, paragraph 14. Who are they trying to reach out to here? 
how do you know what clues are in the text? There's a big thing there. I'm not going to reread it. I want you guys to go back and reread it. If you want to pause the video and reread this really quickly before you answer, great. Okay. Uh, getting on the home stretch here. We got a few more paragraphs, guys. Selfies are about making memories. Selfies also help us create special memories. By posing with friends or at special events or places, we create snapshots that we can look back on with fond feelings. Obviously, taking selfies helps create memories because people naturally take selfies when something is happening right there close to them. They also take selfies when visiting places they like or think are really are funny or strange or interesting. There are even relfies where people take photos of themselves or where couples take photos of themselves. I've never heard of a relfie. I've heard of ussies. Never heard of a relfie. That's weird. Maybe a relationship selfie. Did you know that couples who take and show more relfies are more satisfied with and committed to their relationships than people who don't? Oh, I know I have relfies with Kim. I am not going to call that a relfie, by the way. That's a... Uh, it's pretty bad. That's kind of embarrassing. Um, but there's a Ralphie with Kim, if you want to call it that. I call it an Ussy or a Wee. Okay, that's a bad one because I had a weird beard. There's a good one. That's a nice one. My first block's always asking for pictures of Kim for whatever reason. Or it's my second block. That's my reason. Another good one. I mean, I'm, I'm satisfied in my relationship. I'm happy. I'm committed to her. Okay. And there are groupies, selfies that include the selfie taker and friends or family or even celebrities. Y'all remember when they brought in those selfie sticks and you're like, hey, so right now, hey, peace. I'm taking a, I'm taking a groupie with you guys. They're not called groupies. I have no idea. But you remember the selfie sticks that people would just post out. You can take a giant picture uh, of everybody that's around. They make the best memories since they include people we want to remember. Last two paragraphs, guys. Selfies really are better than words. Whether by ourselves or with our favorite things, places, or people, selfies obviously say it better than words. They express who we are and what matters most to us. I need you guys to do me a favor before you get started on this. When you submit this video, okay, I want you guys to make sure that you include what I asked a few minutes ago, like about really 15 minutes ago. I'm not going to jump into that again. Go back if you need to find it or rewatch this video, but I want you to write in that. Last thing, I want you guys to make sure that you write this last thing um, in there. I want you to literally type in, Relfies are weird. Okay, Just the word Relfies are weird. That's going to tell me that you watched this video and you really got into it. I don't like the term Relfy. Don't, don't, ugh, ugh. If, if you come back to school and you say Ralphie, I might Ralph, which means I might bleh. Uh, Ralphies are weird. So I want you to write what I asked you to write earlier. And I also want you to write Ralphies are weird. Um, just to show that you watched this video. Now, in order to be counted present today, this will go with you, but you have to do the better than selfies uh, or uh, uh, better than words second read assignment, guys. You also have to do the other assignments, but you must do the second read assignment. Uh, anything that's missing, you're just going to have to make up. Um, so let's just make sure that we don't have to do that, all right? I love you guys. I miss you. I love this story. Um, it's or This story, this essay, uh, it really captivated me as an audience member. But I want you to think about the author's purpose for writing it, the author's claim, who they're writing this to, okay? I love you guys. Miss you. Hopefully we see you tomorrow. If not, uh, I hope that you guys do this. Finish your work. Enjoy your uh, your day. Go out and play in the snow. Send me a picture of you making a snow creation. I'd love to see them because um, I'm getting kind of bored. Uh, stir crazy sitting at home. But miss you guys. Love you. We'll see you soon. Uh, have a great day.